Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. I don't really know what I'm gonna title this video, describe it as. It's, I guess it's just a uh, hiking chat. We're just gonna just chat about some things that uh, really are too much to put into an update video. So those of you who have a little extra time to pour yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, grab a bottle of water and have a seat, we'll just uh, chat about some things here. And mostly the hope is that some of the stuff that I share here or we talk about here today, maybe someone out there can relate to. Like maybe you've thought the same thing and you're not sure, you know, if anybody else thinks that way or has had a similar experience, uh, just to let you know, you're not the only one. So um, backpacking has changed a lot for me lately. And um, I say lately, but it's been over the course of a year to two years. Hiking in general has changed a whole lot for me. And just the way that I view it, what I define as fun, things like that. And it's just kind of hitting me now how different it kind of is to when I really, really started hiking and getting into it. So when I first started hiking years ago, I would just look for the hardest thing possible. So, you know, it started with Table Rock. I would hike Table Rock in just a matter of hours. This is like a six mile trail. If you've hiked Table Rock, it's pretty tough. Um, just tackle that as fast as I can and find the next toughest thing to take on. Just scouring these hiking blogs of the upstate for what's the next thing. Uh, Pinnacle Mountain, got it. Gonna go tackle that in the height of summer. Uh, hike it in, again, just a couple of hours as fast as I can. Uh, Hospital Rock, no problem. Gonna take that one on. Rim of the Gap, okay, I got you. I'll do that one three times. And just whatever the toughest thing was, I wanted to take it on. I wanted to do it. And if I got hurt, I was like, keep pushing through it. It'll make you stronger. It'll make you tougher. Just keep going. And the Art Lobe was a serious wake-up call last year. I feel like I talk about the Art Lobe a lot. I'm really sorry if I do. I was like, I'm going to take this thing on. It's notoriously difficult. I'm going to do it in two days. I'm going to pull a 16-mile, 15-mile day, uh, both days and just knock this thing out nonstop, just go. And it was miserable. I had a really tough time, not just physically, but mentally. And it was cold. There were so many moments like climbing Pilot Mountain and, you know, climbing up Tenant Mountain and going through Shining Rock where I'm just thinking, this isn't fun. Like, why, why did this used to be fun? It used to be so fun for me you know, years ago, just taking on a hike and the bigger the suffer fest, the more fun it was. I just thrived off of how painful the hike was and how hard it was and what a tough time I was having. And within the last year, I'm just finding myself wishing to do more leisurely things. I want to go camping and maybe hike two miles max just around the campground or base camp at, at this area and then just kind of explore little spur trails. More leisurely trips are sounding better and better. I did the Black Mountain Crest with Nora. And again, this one notoriously difficult called North Carolina's Death March. And I decided to break it up over three days. We were gonna break it up. We were gonna hike out to a good camp spot, base camp, leave a bunch of stuff behind and take the essentials, go out to Mitchell and back, camp again, just take it as slow as we wanted to. And when we got done, we got done. And took that 24 miles over three days out and back. And that was one of the most fun trips I've done in a very long time. And it was difficult. It wasn't easy by any means, but we hiked seven and a half miles or 7.6 miles the first day. And that was enough. It was like, okay, we're done. We're just gonna camp. We're done. That's fine. Hiked some number of miles out and back to Mitchell the next day. And that was perfect. Just enough. Not too much, you know, to where we, we, I say we, but she can go forever and ever and ever hiking. Nothing stops her. But to where I wasn't feeling like I was hitting a breaking point. And then just leisurely hiking the seven and a half back out to the car. Um, again, not feeling like it was too much or hitting a breaking point. Sorry, as I sit here, the sun keeps moving and like going into my eye. Um, but so 
did that, it was a lot of fun. Hiking our own hike, taking it at our own pace, and doing it the way that I felt like doing it, just kind of leisurely, doing a challenge in a leisurely way, if that's even possible. But so all of this to say, comparing those trips, it was just such a different feeling. So I did the art lobe, I'm glad I did, but my memory of it isn't as fond. It's just kind of this really difficult thing that I remember most of it feeling like, why am I even here? I don't want to be here under these circumstances doing this. And then I look at the Black Mountain Crest and it was tons of fun. And I was so worried about this trip because of its difficulty and just some of the obstacles and technical aspects of it. But it was so much fun. It was tough, but it was fun. And then I decided that I wanted to do the Foothills Trail again. But instead of going Oconee to Table Rock, because I had already done that, I was going to go the opposite way. I was going to go Table Rock to Oconee and forget about doing it in seven days. No, I was going to do it in five. And I was going to tackle all of that the first day. So from Table Rock all the way to Chimney Top, I was going to knock out that climb up Pinnacle, the Drawbar Cliffs. I was going to knock out the climb up Sassafras and make my way down to Chimney Top all in the first day, like that 13 mile section. It's gonna knock it all out and then finish the trail in four more days. And it didn't happen. Uh, day one, I injured myself and uh, had to get rescued. Um, so obviously it was not a case of where like life or death or any danger by any means. So to give a little context without my entire life story, um, in the past couple of years, I've had this just nagging issue with my knee where if I push too far, if I exceed too many miles in a day and my pack is too heavy, like it'll hurt. And if I'm not careful and I continue to hike on it while it hurts, um, which you shouldn't do, it'll hurt for, and it'll bother me for like a week to two weeks after. Um, but I've learned like what the limit is and I know better when I should or should not keep hiking on it. It's just something that's compounded from, you know, years of not listening to my body when something hurts and continuing through it. And I did a ton of trail running and just running in general in previous years. And that was the thing is I wouldn't listen when my knee was killing me or my back and I would just keep going. And you know, that's kind of a, a side effect, a symptom of making those really dumb choices back when I thought like, oh, I'm 22, I'll, I'll bounce back in a day, I'll be fine, and here I am 27, and that's not old, okay? Definitely, even your 30s is not old, but I can't keep doing this over and over and over. My body isn't going to heal the same way. I made it five miles in, and my pack was starting to kind of hurt like you know that feeling when it hurts between your shoulders and on your shoulders and you adjust it every which way to try and get it to sit right on your hips but uh it was heavy it was like 30 something pounds and that's too much i've said in the past 30 is my limit like that's too much for me to comfortably carry without having some kind of issue but i was starting to feel it five miles in like my back was hurting i couldn't get this pack comfortable but i kept on going then getting up to Cantrell, my knee started to hurt a little bit. And so I took a break with Nora. We took a little lunch break at Cantrell home site. And the thought crossed my mind, like, maybe we should stop here. We've only gone like eight, nine miles, but maybe we should stop. But I was like, no, I've got to get this done. I, I got to get these hard miles out of the way. We got to get over Sassafras today. I don't know why, you know, I felt like this had to get done. No one was saying it had to. It was just in my own head. Like, I want to accomplish this today. Get it over with. I get up to Sassafras. And you know, the Foothills Trail is the land of bridges and steps. And I take a step up onto one of these wooden steps. And my knee, I feel something pop. And if you've ever had that happen, like, you know, that is not good. So I felt something pop and then it was just this shooting pain. Every time I took a step up or a step down, it was just this sharp shooting pain. I was like, come on. So I braced my knee, took some ibuprofen. When I got to Chimney Top, I was like, I can't do this. I can't 
continue feeling like this and continue on this injured knee for four more days, especially doing like 15 mile days. That's just not smart or responsible to do. I absolutely hated doing it, but I called Taz and I was like, I hurt my knee, I need, I need a rescue. And so camped out that night at Chimney Top, spent some time with some really great people, and then uh, hauled myself back up to the Chimney Top access and waited for my ride. And it was disappointing. As soon as I hung up the phone, uh, before I went into camp, I just sat down on the ridge and cried and cried and cried because I felt like such a loser and such a failure because, you know, I let my knee get hurt and here I am. You know, I've hiked this thing all the way through once. Why is it so hard the second time not thinking about the fact that my pack is absurdly heavy. I'm taking on the hardest miles, the hardest elevation day one in a huge chunk. I'm definitely going to finish it uh, through hike as what? Well. Finish it in a calendar year. And you know, you could even argue that it doesn't matter if it takes you an entire lifetime. You know, there are some people who take literally a decade, sometimes longer, their entire lifetime to hike the Appalachian Trail, section by section, what they are able to do in between major family events and raising kids and, you know, working their job, and they eventually get it done, and they do it. And does that diminish their accomplishment? I would argue no. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to hike something. If you get it done in the way that you can and you hike it through, it counts. Uh, go ahead and argue with me if you want, whatever. And I don't know why I was feeling so hard on myself, but it was tough. I was just thinking like, I'm such a wimp. I'm, I've gone soft. I'm such like a baby because I can't go out there and just hike these miles and put my nose to the ground and grind and ignore the pain and just keep going through it. That was my thought is I've just, I've gone soft. What's wrong with me? And of course, I've already had very lengthy discussions with Jordan about all of this, but he is so wise. My husband is just so wise. He said, it's not going soft, it's, it's maturing. Uh, we all go through this phase where we think we're invincible and nothing's ever gonna catch up to us and you can keep doing the next big thing, the next extreme thing. But when you realize like putting yourself in a situation where it just sucks, isn't fun anymore, isn't not being tough anymore, it's just, growing up and realizing I like doing this activity but I don't like doing it this way and I can't keep doing it this way if it's gonna cause injury or whatever the situation is and uh, also you know you're not you're not a loser you're not a baby because you couldn't hike through an injury uh, you're a baby if you sit around just crying about it and give up and you know feel sorry for yourself because of it I don't intend to just give up quit and you know, forget about finishing the miles that I started. Right now, I've got tons of friends uh, who are section hiking it or doing, you know, bits and pieces every weekend or a couple weekends, whenever they can. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. It's a, not any less of an accomplishment or less of a through hike. Again, you can argue if you want to. A year ago, it was totally feasible for me to hike it in one go in one week all the way through right now things are different I mean we didn't have 20 some odd chickens and two dogs and Jordan's work didn't have the same high demand that it does this year and so it's gonna have to look a little different it's gonna have to be broken up into sections and also I have to do some serious reassessing of my gear so my pack is the Osprey Aura I, I will praise it till the cows come home. But it's also heavy as all get out. I keep bringing up this number of 30 pounds. Well, five of that is the backpack itself. So I'm gonna be looking into a lighter weight pack, something between the two and three range, which kind of counts as a, like a borderline ultralight. I'm definitely not gonna go with something frameless. Um, I have a pack in mind and then a couple of like runners up to try if that one doesn't quite work. I want to give the Osprey Levity a try. I know the Lumina is the girl version, but I'm going to try the male version just because I've got this weird situation where I don't quite fit a women's small and I don't quite fit a women's medium. Small is too short, 
but medium is too long. Um, and my torso length is not like the exact 17 or exact 18. It's some fraction in between to where one size doesn't work and then the next size up doesn't work. So I'm going to try the men's pack where there's more of like a buffer between those two sizes where the men's torso length size kind of encompasses where I fall before going up to the next size. So I'm going to try the levity in a size small, see how I like it. And uh, it's very minimal, very lightweight. I think it's like right at two pounds or like 1.9 something. And um, just give that a try and try and pare down my, my gear to a comfortable weight. Yes, still have some comfort, but also not feel like, well, I've got this extra pocket, so I have to fill it up. You know how kind of that goes or packing your fears. Like I need four different types of fire starter and I need like two extra fuel canisters just in case. Just kind of paring it down a lot to just what I need and being smart about and intentional about everything that I pack. So I'm gonna test that out. If that pack doesn't work, then uh, I am also considering the Gregory Optic. I know Octal, I think, all of these like men's and women's pack names just kind of confuse me. But so I am gonna try again, a men's pack, just because that torso thing I mentioned. Try the Optic, give that one a shot if the Osprey doesn't work. I like that kind of trampoline style uh, frame that has the airflow that goes through the back of it, just that well ventilated panel. And that's definitely a deal breaker. If, if the pack doesn't have that, then I'm not gonna consider it. If y'all have any recommendations, that would be great. Please do not recommend the Osprey Wren or Rook. I've tried them and uh, have not been pleased with those packs. I've got a couple of runner-ups, like I said, if the levity doesn't work, really hoping it does. It should get here by this weekend and maybe I'll take it out for just a day hike, load it up fully and take it out into the National Forest and just give it a good shakedown, see how it does and uh, my knee will be better by then if I rest and ice and Epsom salt and all that kind of happy good stuff, it will be fine. Please don't think it's like this really serious crippling injury. I've mentioned it's something that I've been dealing with for like a year to two years and by now I've learned to, you know, help it recover quickly and get back on my feet. Because when I hiked the Black Mountain Crest, when I did Linville Gorge, no knee problems at all because I wasn't pushing it, I wasn't overloading my pack and it may sound silly but in a way this thing that happens time to time with my knee is a curse and a blessing and kind of a way that god gives me a little wake up call like hey you're pushing yourself too far are you being a very good steward of your body no you're doing something a little bit too much right now you're pushing your limit beyond what you should be doing uh time to take a step back and, and stop this it's going to be fine the trail will still be there and it's not like anybody is counting on or pressuring me besides my own self to, you know, get back out there and finish those 60 something miles. It's something that should be fun and leisurely. Like I said before, the idea with just this little chat, this video is maybe if someone out there feels similarly, uh, you're not the only one. You know, if you used to enjoy hiking because it was difficult and there's, you know, this extreme element to it and the tougher the challenge, the better it is, that type two fun. If you're finding that that's just not as great as it used to be, you're not the only one and that's not a bad thing. And I think we can't blame YouTubers or, you know, hiking channels and stuff like that, but it is kind of the pattern that follows is, okay, this person has a really successful video where they go and hike the Appalachian Trail. Well, what's next? The PCT? Okay, great. Well, naturally the CDT has to come after that. It does kind of sit in the back of your head like, well, this is the example of what success having a hiking channel is. So shouldn't I be doing the same thing? Shouldn't I be finding the next big thing, the next white whale to conquer? You know, if I'm not doing that, then I'm irrelevant or I'm not successful. And that's just not the case. You know, hike your own hike, do what you're gonna do. Barrett has this problem called not knowing how to mind his own business. So anytime any neighbor 
goes out to do anything in their yard. It is his his business, and he needs to oversee what's going on. Hey, you stop that. I thank you so much if you did stay to the end. I commend you. I wish I had an award to give you, but I don't. Um, as always, I hope that something that is shared is meaningful or helpful to someone somewhere somehow. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind